This show contains adult content. Sounds Like Crows is sponsored by Suzanne Hagen, Double Up Omega, Historian of Nukes, T, and Ariel Weiss, along with all of our other patrons at patreon.com forward slash sounds like crows. Howdy folks, this is Caleb Sunstead, your host and game marshal. Sounds Like Crows is running a competition for the month of May, where if you leave us a rating and a review on iTunes, you get a chance to win either a Sounds Like Crows t-shirt or a chance to play in a game with me and some of the Crow Boys. Uh, We'll be picking those reviews randomly at the end of May, so if you've already left us a review either this month or previously, perfect, you're already entered to win. I believe we're going to be picking five people or rather we're going to be randomly rolling five people and if we can't get the scheduling to work out we'll send you a t-shirt or if you want to opt out of an online game with me totally fine we'll send you a sounds like crows t-shirt with all that out of the way welcome back to the weird west Previously on Sounds Like Crows, the brothers are on the Mexican galleon, the Carne de Oso, in a portion of the maze far too small for the colonel's ship. The ship had peeled away from the ambush in an attempt to escape, only to find themselves in another trap. Faced with the end of their mortal existence by way of children, the crows do what they do best. As the colonel shouts his defiance, Abel pauses for a moment, looks behind him, and sees the horde of children holding what looks to him to be uh, napalm or grenades of some sort. He lets go of the doctor, reaches down for the pistol, and fuck this, whips it up and shoots at Mondragon. Okay, make a shooting roll. Good call, dude. <laughs> Good thinking. These kids are what prime are we bottles, looking at man. here? There's, just there's no two. way this could turn just out Just negative bad. two? I believe so, because there's no fog this down below. I think it's lit by the lanterns. So what's the minus two from? Uh, his, his wounds. wounds. We didn't redraw Benny's at the start of this, did we? Yeah, yeah, we did. You got one more. We did, and you though. spent two, so you have one. But you don't need to, right? Because you hit him. No. <laughs> I, I rolled a I rolled a net four minus two. Uh. You know what? I think it's I think it's perfectly fine and in canon if Abel misses. So he shouts that out and uh you take a shot and it whips past his hair and Mondrian looks to you with like shocked hurt in his eyes and then his eyes narrow as like your brothers pull you down into the deck of the ship. What the hell, Abel? Ellis, only way we're getting out of here is if one of those boys is on our side. Our side's fucked, so I'm switching. So we're going to kill him? We're going to kill whoever we have to to get the fuck out of here. Alive. Get our shit. All right. The children on the deck of the ships look in confusion for a moment. Some guns are pointed at them. And then uh, from above, the cola kid yells, Let them see the light of our father. And the children start to shake their bottles, and they start to glow, and they smash down the bottles on the deck of the ship. As soon as the bottles smash on the deck of the ship, they don't explode. It's almost like napalm or thermite. It's this highly intense chemical reaction that pops out of the glass bottle and just starts to eat through the deck of the ship. The first shot is like six of those holes opening up on the deck, and then the camera moves through the deck of the ship to see three of the boys and the doctor making their way into the deck, and then these pops of orange light like instantly coming through the deck and slamming down onto the deck thereon. The second they smash their bottles and that fizzing sound starts to fill the canyon, men attached to the other side of the children's ropes run towards the edge of the cliff and jump. The children are launched into the air and they start to run up the side of the canyon as these adults land on the deck of the ship and draw cutlasses and rapiers and move to attack the crew. Uh, Mondrian moves out from behind his wheel and uh, I think I'm not going to be taking turns with the Mexican soldiers and we're just going to be assuming that uh, the Mexican soldiers are dealing with a number of combat individuals we won't deal with so right now we're just going to deal with 10 minions from the upright gang that have landed on the deck of the ship 
Manuel moves from behind the wheel, draws both of his horse guns for free, and then fires both of them with rapid fire. He fires these revolvers almost as fast as your brother Harper does when he's fanning the hammer. So he rolls 2d12 and then a, a wild die, which he can modify one of those with, and then an additional d 2d12 with a d6 wild die he can modify those with. So he hits two with a raise and two without a raise. He does 2d6 plus two. Close up. One's dead. Two's dead. A third is shaken. And a fourth is dead. So he draws these two weapons from his ivory holsters and starts firing double action pulling the triggers as fast as he can he lights two up with three bullets each uh, moves both guns to double headshot another man that just landed and then his last shot he fires um, hitting the rope above the man's head sending him falling the rest of the way to the deck slamming his head against the deck of the ship Abel, you're next. Abel uh, has left, at this point, I think, left behind the doctor. Plan now is evacuation, and he has Ellis and Lucky with him. With his pistol holstered, he just sprints down the deck of the ship, dodging in between these beams of fire and uh, the new holes that are being created in the deck, and he just shoulder charges the door of their room open. Do I have time to grab a few things? If you want to spend your turn sort of doing that, that sounds good to me. Great. So running into the room, he immediately runs to his hammock and kicks aside a couple of sacks, then pulls open one that was under the other ones. And inside there is the same roughly uh, shoebox sized wooden case that was on the mules that he had checked previously. He confirms the box is still in the sack, swipes the sack up, and then reaches over into the stack of Thaddeus's possessions and shuffles around for the bag that seems to have cards and the ranger's bible in it. Man, I thought you were going for the dynamite bag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, I was oh, like, dang, that is, is there dynamite down here? <laughs> Dude, I've been carrying around two backpacks since episode yeah. one. And one of, them, of one of them is carrying a case of 24 sticks of dynamite. No, God, minus Jesus. the one I used when I got the digger edge. 23. <laughs> Abel reaches over into Thaddeus's possession, <laughs> rummages through, and grabs the bag that has the Ranger's Bible and the decks of cards in it. As he's getting ready to stand up, something catches his eye, and he pauses. It's a bag full of dynamite. Because Thaddeus has been using it as a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lucky, it's your turn. Uh, Lucky is blinking in and out of consciousness. In one of the turn of events, when he does actually regain a little bit of consciousness, he realizes he's being carried <laughs> rather gracefully by Ellis. <laughs> uh, what? What the? What the hell? Let go of me, Ellis. Stay awake, Lucky. Let go of me, asshole. No. And he kind of struggles and, and tries to get out of. Hey, Lucky. hey, you're in no position to be walking around right now. I'm fine. I'm probably grappled right now, right? Can I actually get out of this? You can get out of it if you want. Yeah. Is, are you gonna let me? Are sure. You? Yeah. Okay. So Lucky lands on his two feet. Well, where are we? Are we under the deck? Yeah, for now. Why? I thought. What's with all this fire? I don't. Do we see what, what happened before we went below deck? Uh, you must have, yeah. So what do we see down here? Is smoke or you see uh, like hot pillars of of thermite eating through the decks? That damn cola kid. He's got a bunch of twelve year old boys. Get in here and get your shit. We're going. A chill runs down Lucky's neck as he hears the word cola kid again. We don't want to be caught by him. And if we do, we gotta kill him. End of story. Are we running, Abel? Or are we killing this captain? Which captain? Cola? No, oh, Mondragon. Why would we kill him? He won't surrender. Doesn't seem like good reason to kill. What do you want to do, Lucky? Like on the rules it says, like, oh, a player can say a few quick words on their turn. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that is it. That's going to be my turn then. Uh, I'm just going to lean up against Abel. Next up are the remaining soldiers who fire at some of the people above them uh, landing on the deck of the ship. I think they're ignoring the person that sh shot at Mondrian because it's kind of low priority right now. And then after them is Harper. So Harper has just been honestly hiding. Uh, he's just been trying to keep his head down. So uh, when these people hit the deck, Caleb, is anybody close to Harper? Uh, yeah, there's at least two people close to you. One gets immediately taken out by Mondrian. And there's one you have cover from, but uh, he's probably about 10 feet away from you. Interesting. And does he seem to know I'm there? You want me to make a stealth roll? I'm just going to make a notice roll for him. How about that? He doesn't know you're there. <sighs> So Harper sees his brothers take off downstairs. Uh, they're all wounded. He looks over at this guy. He sees a chance. He pulls out his gun 
and he starts taking some slow, quiet steps up behind him. I think this guy is kind of taking a moment to look around and figure out what his next move is when Harper just aims his pistol at the back of this guy's head unaware and pulls the trigger. So I'm not going to take my negatives because they're within 35 feet. Sure. Do I get a bonus for him not knowing where I'm at? Yeah, I don't think you have the drop, but I think you could get plus one from it. Okay, so I'll be making this at plus one then, total. Eight, so I hit with a raise. Dead, dead. 18, flip plus one from the pistol. Head explodes. Yeah, so Harper sneaks up behind this dude, lowers his pistol at the back of his head, pulls the trigger, and just blood and just gore splatter all over the deck. And he just starts sprinting downstairs, trying to follow his brothers. One of the men that's landed on the deck of the ship is going to take a, a passing shot at you. Uh, he's going to hit eight damage. I'm shaking. Ouch. The rest are going to fire at the people on the deck of the ship. Five of them move running up the stairs and move at Mondrian with rapiers and cutlasses. In order, they're just going to get an additional gang up bonus as they go down the line. And then when someone's unarmored, what does that mean again? Plus two to their attack roll. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So one of them blows up thoroughly. One regular and three raise hits. Oh, that blows up. Mondrian takes 19 damage. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully he's dead. <laughs> he's going to spend a Benny to soak it. Uh, so he soaks one of 19, so that effectively reduces it to a 15. He's got seven toughness, so... Eight over, so, so two. that's two. That's two raise. So he takes two, two wounds, wounds on the first fucking... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> And that wasn't even How the one raises. Looking better and better. How are we doing, yeah. guys? Are we feeling okay? The second one moves into attack. <laughs> that was just the first dude? Yeah. yeah. That was just, oh, my that God. Was, that wasn't even the ones with raises, dude. Uh, that's Jeez. 20 damage. He's going to try to soak again. <laughs> the next ones are going to do even more damage. Oh. He soaks that. And then this is the last raise attack. 12 damage to his seven. So he will try to soak it again. He'll try to soak it with his last penny. So he soaks it, so he's no longer shaken, he has no bennies, and he's taken two wounds. So these men charge at him on the the wheel side of the ship, and they push him up against the edge of the ship, and they start to come at him. He blocks one with, like, his horse gun, you know, and he tries to fire it, and the blade sort of gets stuck between the hammer and the gun, and then someone else stabs, stabs him in the side, and then he gets bull rushed by another that knocks him into the back of the ship. There's a low shot against the violent water as, like, a bit of the railing gets cracked and flies over and flies into the camera and splashes into the water as blood drains down Mondrian's side. We cut to a figure on the top of the canyon. He's facing the camera, which is sort of blacked out. We can see some of the gunfire lighting him up from below and the lanterns on the ship. And he's holding a crucifix between his hands. And then he drops it and lets it hang at his neck as it's revealed it's a necklace. And then he pops the cork of the soda he's holding in his hand and quickly downs it, guzzling it down in only a few seconds. And then he falls backwards very slowly off the edge of the cliff. And then just when it looks like he's about to fall, as his body turns almost to a 90 degree angle, he puts one of his feet on the edge of the cliff wall and it seems to get stuck there. Like it's magnetized to it as he like falls backwards and we cut and we can see his face looking down at the ship as he smiles and his teeth are black and green covered in this slimy soda he's drinking and then he swivels his body around and starts to run down the side of the canyon wall. He's going to have to make a roll for it. Uh, It's with a raise so he can move at his normal speed. Ellis, you're up. What do you need, Lucky? Which bags? Come on. I don't need any of this shit. Let's just go. We can't stay here long, man. All right. I, I grab uh, I grab a suitcase. <laughs> it kind of clanks as I pick it up uh, with glass. And then I, um, I got my little satchel. I put that on. All right, boys. Let's get out of here. Let's go find Harper and Thaddeus. Uh, what about Harper's signature duffel bag? Uh, yeah, I'll grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grab his signature duffel bag. I'm about to leave. Yeah, and you see it by the, like, oh, the his, side of the door. He might be sleeping in the other room because there's oh, two okay. rooms, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> it's Harper's signature duffel bag. <laughs> he's, I, he's always at it. So if we're leaving, I guess I'll uh, I'll dip into that room real fast and grab it. And you head on out. Thaddeus, you're on the deck of the ship. What do you want to do? My question is, 
Would you describe the fray that the colonel and these uh, these pirates are in would be fitting within like a medium burst area of effect? Absolutely. The four people on him. Would they maybe fit in a small burst? Uh, they would. They're all adjacent. Cool. So I'm going to spend three power points and I'm going to cast sloth, speed. Uh, sloth speed spell. Basically, I am casting this with an extra power point to make it strong. So the spirit roll they need to make to shake off the sloth's effect will be made at negative two if I succeed on this spell casting roll. Oh, well, I mean. Wow. Well, it's <laughs> Very a six well and an eight. Like, yeah, six and an eight. You know, they, they blew so up So with a raise, yep. Yeah. 13. So they're making this at negative two? Does the raise do anything? Uh, yeah, could I make the raise add like an extra negative two? I'll give it an extra negative one. Sounds good to me. Negative three. It's going to be an action for them to, to even move. move. Wow. Unbelievable. That is the end of the round. I think some of Mondrian's troops are following the boys down below, but you can tell they're not coming after you. They're starting to deal with the fires that are happening on this ship. There's very clearly a strict protocol for when that sort of thing happens. Thaddeus, six of hearts. Ellis, eight of hearts. Abel, four of clubs. Harper, hit to a ten of clubs. Uh, Lucky gets a four diamonds. Upright gang gets a seven. Cola kid gets a five. Mondrian's men get an ace. And then Mondrian himself gets a jack of diamonds. So first to go is Mondrian's troops, the army, the Mexican army. Um, This is going to be really annoying because you've done like four episodes, but they're actually the Navy. No, it is the army. It's the army using boats? Correct. They're commandos. So the Mexican troops go first and try to put out these fires that are happening and can tell that the fires aren't doing like a lot of damage, but it seems like they're pulling all the troops away. Mondrian goes next. He's going to roll to become unshaken first unshaken uh he's surrounded by three of these guys he has to take an action to move if Mm. he wants to do that Mm -hmm. obviously concerned about his abuela he drops his revolvers and then draws a rapier along with a dagger from his side and moves to attack these people surrounding him that's a miss and then he attacks with his dagger that is also a miss He moves to like attack at these guys and they just immediately block him and like he locks blades with one of them and they push him further into that damaged railing. And uh, man, he's got to be so pissed right now. Abel just shot him. Everything's I mean, going wrong. You know, is he that... must be feeling real weird because all of a sudden he got real slow <laughs> yeah. around him. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. definitely like some. I'm picturing like Lion King style slow mo for these guys. All, all what fighting. does that mean? Oh, it's like oh. that. It's that stuttery as opposed to like you know the Matrix slow mo. No, mm. I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean? Like, well, watch, we're gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, next up, yeah. is... he does have to be in a weird mental position. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Harper is next. So Harper's fucking booking it. He's just running down the hallways looking for his brothers. I think uh, he can hear the men coming down behind him. He's not sure who it is. He doesn't know that it's the, the army or the pirates. So he's just booking it. Oh, shit. I'm shaking. Roll Shake spirit. it off, dude. Nope. Woof. So I'm still shaking, but I can move. So yeah, Harper, I mean, none of the other brothers made a running roll, so I think he makes it to them. Yeah. He comes flying around the corner, breathing heavily, and just doesn't say anything. He just kind of looks back. Ellis. Jack. I see Harper run down the stairs and start making his way down the hallway as we're making our way down the hallway to go up the stairs. We're jumping ship, Harper. Where's Thaddeus? I don't fucking know. All right, let's go find him. We got to be quick. There was somebody coming down the stairs. Move, boys, move. You move over to the the stairway, Ellis, and you can see them filing down and into the room. There's a break in them as uh, they've like moved to put out fires and grabbing sand uh, placed around the ship to dump on it. Cool. Yeah, I start walking up. Next up is the upright gang. They once again move to attack Mondrian. Two of them blew up as well. Oof. And it oh. blew up again. I mean, that's just the attack roll, I guess, so. Yeah, but. (laughs) First one, all raises, 10 damage to his seven. So he's shaken, two wounds. Second one, um, that blows up. So we're already at 18. We're at 19. Yeah, Mondrian is pushed back. He looks back and then looks forward. This guy brings down his blade, cuts through Mondrian's throat, and then cracks his collarbone and the blade is stuck in it for a minute as the guy tries to pull it out. And when he pulls it out, Mondrian just like looks down, his head falling to his side, and then one of the other guys kicks him off, and he falls loosely into the water below. 
gonna make a vigor roll for Mondrian. And this is all in slow motion, remember? Falling and seeing his blood flow through the air as he falls. He makes a vigor roll at negative three. He succeeds. Uh, success. Roll on the injury table. The injury goes away when all wounds are healed. Roll 2d6. Seven. Guts. Broken. Agility reduces by die type. He falls off the ship and splashes into the water below. Uh, the rest of the people on board the deck move to the Mexican soldiers that are still around. I'm going to see what percentage of them they kill, and that's going to be their turn. I'm going to roll a d100. 45%, so they fight and massacre half the Mexican troops on the deck of the ship. And then we move on to Thaddeus. So if I just watched Mondragon die in slow motion, potentially Thaddeus becomes of singular focus, and I think he's going to tear ass downstairs. Uh, he's heading for the stairs tries to weave around some of the the mexican crew staying wide of the the fray with the pirates he'll come across his brothers boys <laughs> the colonel the colonel's dead i just watched him he, they cut him down listen we got to get out of here this is our chance that's what we're doing let's go yeah you're fucking right all yeah right. we got your bags listen, both of them yeah all right listen there's one thing i gotta get before we leave y'all get collected where are we hopping off what what are you getting i, I just i need to see I just need to take a look at something. The fuck are you talking just about, Thaddeus? Just quit talking in fucking riddles, Thaddeus! Right, what and, do you need? And then, and then he'll push past you guys and keep on charging down. No, come on back. God, the colonel's got, colonel's got something I want. Get it fast, then. Harper's right. Let's fucking go. Thaddeus does not respond. And he's, he's heading down. Pushing up the cool. stairs. Yeah, yeah I, think you can, uh, I think you can break into his office or his, his quarters there easily unlocked. You go in there, he's got his maps, he's got tons of guns. Like, the first thing you notice when you come into his kind of small quarters, he's got some windows looking out the back of the ship. Uh, every wall is covered in guns. He's got two or three desks that are covered in, like, in-work guns or guns he's modifying or something like that. And then he's got a large desk with, like, piles of cards and dice lined up and lots of books about uh, the study of poker and what have you. If it's not too crazy, he's going to grab, like, one shotgun from this massive, like, guns and collection and all that. Sure. But he's definitely looking for a particular title among the, the pile of books and things like that on this dude's desk. How we're going to handle this, Thaddeus, is uh, we're going to make a, a dramatic task with three successes. But okay. you can make a roll this turn as a notice roll. A notice. Man, yeah. Man, oh, man. You know, guys. Is that a skill anybody has? Yeah. <laughs> I I've do. Got, I have a lot of notice. I do have notice. I have one D4. With Suede, we all have at least yeah. a D4, one D4, right? <laughs> one D4. <laughs> it's one tick. Uh, four. That's one tick. That's one tick as you start to pilfer through his books, and we cut over to the cola kid. He jumps from the wall onto the deck of the ship that is no longer moving, and he flips another bottle up from his waistband, pops the cork, and just pours it into his mouth. It's splashing over the side of his mouth, like onto his, his shitty red goatee he has, and spilling onto his clothes. All of his clothes seem too short for him or too small for him. The, the sleeves almost come up to his elbows. His pants look more like capris. And he's wearing uh, sandals on his feet and then a loose gun belt on his side with, with no ammo belt. It's just like a normal belt. He is carrying a bunch of glass bottles that are in a bandolier over his shoulder and coming down to his waist. He pulls one out, pops the cork, like I said, dumps into his mouth. And then I'm going to roll for him. Just a success. Ellis, as you your head breaks the top of the, the deck so you can see on top of the ship, you see the cola kid as he's guzzling this soda, and then he disappears. And then his voice starts to boom out over the deck of the ship. Behold, sinners, it is not too late, for we are all born with the inclinations of sin. But if you are to give up your arms and come to the light, you can still be spared. Uh, he's going to make an intimidate roll against the Mexican soldiers that remain on the deck of the ship. Lucky, what's your taunt? What's my taunt? Yeah, what's... D10. He's got a D10 in intimidate. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he blows up a six into an eight with a raise. We're going to say he's going to roll two D100s, and he's just going to take the better one, and that percentage of soldiers gives up. Now that Mondrian is gone. So 50% of the last 50% of the troops on the deck of the ships drop their guns as he smiles with his black green teeth. Lucky. 
Uh, Lucky's going to be limping up the stairs behind Ellis. And he's going to be looking for... Because Cola Kid's invisible, right? Yeah. So he's going to be looking for a life... Uh, like boat. Boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've struggled on that word uh, multiple times tonight. So I guess a notice roll? I think you can find one. The The problem is not going to be in finding it because you've seen them, you know, having traveled on this deck of the ship. Uh, there's, there's one close by. If you want to start trying to lower it or if you want to cut it in there, you absolutely can. What happens first, though, is you need to swing it over the side of the ship. And there's not much room between the ship and the canyon wall. So I would need to go over there and like push it over or is there like a crank? Yeah, it would be trying to understand the mechanics. So it would be a smarts roll to push it over the water. Ooh, like he's not any good at that. He is pretty smart. He's, smart. Yeah, he's very smart. Oh, really he's smart. got a D10. Like he's a fucking No, I got idiot. a D8. I got a D8. He's pretty smart. That is pretty smart. That is pretty smart. <laughs> um, not as smart as Mondrian, who's dead. Who's dead. Probably. <laughs> he's probably dead. <laughs> Lucky's just going to, instead of actually trying to help, he's going to just jump inside the lifeboat and wait for someone else to do the task. <laughs> or else, yeah, there's no way, right? That's they a classic three. Lucky move. All right, so he's going to fall into there. You can get a Benny for that. I'll get the hat. Give him the hat. Give the hat. Just get the hat real quick. Uh, sweet negative three. You decided hey, give not him the hat. to uh, participate in the dramatic task. Anytime you choose not to take your turn, you'll probably get a Benny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Done. I can well, do that a lot. A, yeah, a Benny every hell. round this yeah, combat. Yeah, shut, shut your mouth. That was... <laughs> uh, Abel, yeah. you're the last one. Abel rushes up onto the deck. And as he hears the Cola Kid's words, he can tell that he's a lot closer than he was before. And so he immediately begins to scan the deck for their attacker. And I assume sees nothing. Yeah, you see nothing. Correct. Okay. And no notice roll or anything. You actually can make a notice roll at negative six. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a negative six. Right okay. There, so that it may have been a negative four. I don't remember, but either way. Either way, I'm host because I'm also at negative two anyway. Yeah. So it's negative eight, really. Abel looks around, unable to see the cola kid. He's slightly at a loss for what to do. You know, he sees the, sees the combat and the fighting on deck. And then out of the corner of his eye, when he catches Lucky climbing up into the boat, he's got his course of action, and he rushes over there to try and get the boat over the side. Smarts roll it up. And at minus two, that gives me a solid three. Oh, wait a minute. You can take one of Lucky's newly acquired bennies and re-roll that. I'm going to need to roll a six in order to get it. Probably not, right? Because that's only a 17% chance. Hmm. I play Blood Bowl, and that happens a lot more than you'd think, guys. Uh, what are you going to do, Lucky? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah, dude, do it. You, you got this. Can I spend it. a Benny? Yeah. He yells, no, try harder. All right. No, he, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. Got him. Whoa. Blows up into a 10 minus mm-hmm. 2 and 8. Whoa. So, mm-hmm. Well done. <laughs> wow. In all seriousness, what does Lucky do to change that outcome? That's true luck. Well, yeah, what yeah, is that? Nothing. What is that? What happened? It's just it luck. It's just luck. Abel runs up to it and is not sure which lever to choose. He's trying to choose between two of them, and Lucky just goes, yeah, that yeah, one. Points to one of them. And it's the right one. It starts to swing over the edge of the ship, and like you just confidently stand up on the railing and then step into the ship, into the boat as it starts to move over the side. I imagine this is on the port side, on the left side of the ship, but is it near the bow or, or the stern? It's on the bow. That is to get a nine of spades. Alex, you get a two of clubs. Abel, you get a two of spades. Harper, <laughs> you get hit, yeah. get hit into a king of clubs. Harper, uh, lucky you get a queen of spades. The remaining troops get a jack of spades. Cola Kid gets a joker. Oh, fuck. Okay. And the cool. Cola Kid's men get a 10 of diamonds. Yikes. It's great. It's great. It's Rip. Great. Uh, he's not going to go first. Uh, he's going to wait. First is Harper. What do you want to do? So Harper's going to do his best to become unshaken. He does the shit out of it. So Harper is down. It's kind of at the base of the stairwell. Uh, he takes a minute to kind of shake his head and get his faculties back. He draws his pistol and starts moving up towards the top of the ship. He just kind of takes a look around sees everybody getting into the boat. I think he's going to run over there. Is there actually enough room to get the boat into the water? Because you said there was like a foot of clearance on that side. What it's going to be is it's going to scrape on both sides. It's highly likely that the ship may not end upright as it falls into the water below. But, I mean, that's your only option, right? Is it still going that same direction with no one steering? 
Uh, it stopped completely in its tracks by those oh, two that's anchors. Right. Okay, right. What would I have to do in order to start this process or to continue this? Because I don't think that you can. You have any control after you start it. I think you would release a wheel, which would just lower it into the water below very rapidly if you weren't there to deal with it, or you could cut the ropes and just fall. <laughs> so what you're telling me is I have no control over this. No. Just get in the boat. You could you could stand at the top on the ship, lower it, the boat into the water, and then jump overboard. With your one arm. <laughs> 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 yeah, this situation's gone tits up real quick. <laughs> yeah. Like the first roll we made. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that what happens is Harper looks at this and doesn't think it's going to work. Boys, this isn't going to work. We're going to get stuck down there. We got nowhere to go. We can't sail forward or back. There's not enough room down there. Stuck down there is better than getting killed up here. Guns and swords start to turn towards you as you yell out on the deck of the ship. <sighs> Get in. Yeah, I, he gets in the boat, and I'm going to turn around and take a shot if people are starting to take cool. shots at me. Oh, that's a hit, Caleb. So there's six people still on the deck of the ship. Ten damage. Make that five, plus the cola kid. You kill one, dead in his tracks. So I think you're like, you're, can I? Let, let's see what you got, Caleb. You're yelling into the, you're yelling into the boat, and like you turn around, and one of them is charging at you with like his sword, and you see him a little bit too late. And instead of moving away from him, you move into him and you just slam your gun right into his gut and pull the trigger. So his like sword starts to fall over you. And then uh, with that same arm, you just like crouch down, come back up and send him sailing over you and off the side of the ship. Next up is the Mexican soldiers on the deck of the ship. There's not many left, so I'm just going to do four shooting rolls. Three hit. Uh, They shake two of the Cola Kids troops and kill another one. So there's uh, four left. Lucky you're in the boat. It's your turn. Uh, The Cola Kids troops are going next, but they seem to be moving towards the remaining Mexican soldiers. Uh, I'm still going to take a shot at him. Uh, He kind of lazily, not lazily, but half dead, raises a lady up to take a shot and understandably misses. The Cola Kids troops go. They move to cut down the Mexican soldiers. Some of them uh, spend their turns becoming unshaken while another one moves and cuts down one of the Mexican soldiers on the deck of the ship. We then move to Thaddeus in Mondrian's study below. I am tasking dramatically. You got oh, two successes right. left Do on this. you want me to still be noticing? Unless you can explain something else, but I don't see what else it could be. A Colton. Yeah, but you're not trying to like parse through them. You know what it looks like. You're just trying to find it. He's sensing the are you, are you energy. It by arcane energy. Bingo. Yeah, yep. are, you, are you huxing to it? Once I fucks with it, then. Then maybe. Then yeah. I can hux with it, but I gotta fucks with it first. Blow that four up. I believe this will succeed. Blow that four up. There we go. Blow that four up. Twelve, that's a fourteen, baby. Marshall can only succeed when everybody else is dying. (laughs) (laughs) Fortune favors the Crow Brothers, finally. We call that big death energy. Pulling out the drawers of this desk, ripping them apart as you have this new shotgun uh, over over your back. And then finally you find a drawer that's locked. And then I imagine you pull your new fangled shotgun, slide it around on its sling, and point blank fire sort of down so it just shatters the front of the drawer and then uh the desk is sort of half broken and your ears are ringing you pull it out and you see a book older than any you've seen in your life but as you like rub your hand over the cover you can see the faded gold lettering and a single word hoyle you see a gleam in thaddeus's eye and a, a grin across his face And then uh, he'll stash it in his pocket and sort of turn to look towards the door where he's going to be headed next. For how much you blew up over, could I make a suggestion that it's sitting on top of a, a, like in basically a waterproof, like oil skin wrap that he can just quickly wrap it in before he tucks it in his bag? Yeah, I like that. Oh, that's good. Because it it should be protected and stuff. Maybe it was lying open. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mondragon would definitely want this thing safe. Yeah, so you slide it in that and then run with the the shotgun as sling at your side. Yeah. I think too, you can make it to the stairs if you want. Okay. Yeah. And behold, they came like from the sky, like chariots of fire. The ship is ours, boys. Let's do it. And you see uh, two bottles fly out of the Cola kid's hands. Although you don't see that, you just see the two bottles fly and they splash near the holes that like flaming bottles have created. And instantly sort of this black dust starts to pour into the ship and the lights of the fires from those holes start to dissipate. 
as that happens, you can sort of see the glimmer of his figure, like the lights reflecting weird off him, but you can see vaguely where he is now. And that's his turn. Next up is Abel. What I'd like to do is hand Ellis the bag of dynamite to have him chuck at Cola and then shoot it. Narratively, I don't. Uh, you can I hold. Don't think we can do that with the turn. You can turn hold, order, and right? I'll go before you. And I would bet if Ellis is running from there, he'd probably have a slightly better idea of the general area. I understand it's a shot in the dark, but it's also a bag of dynamite. Yeah. Um, so real quick, the dynamite is five d six for eight sticks of dynamite. Don't multiply that by how many sticks you have? Three. Twenty four sticks. No, yeah, three, but sorry. I don't. No, I don't yeah. think you can do that because it's one stick, then two, then eight. So at sixteen, it would be sixty six, and then at thirty two, it would be seventy six. Okay, so sixty six okay. is where it would probably fall. Yeah, still decent. All right. So um, it would also only with like a normal throw, you'd only be able to throw it one yard. And with a raise, you could throw it two yards. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but you could always throw it and then run. But th- those are, would be the rules. Sorry, go for it, Abel. And it's a large. Is it a large with that much or is it medium? Uh, yeah, it'd be a large. How big is large? Bigger than a yard. We're, that's like, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> things. You know, it's like 12 or 24 or something like that. Yeah, it's a lot. So then new plan. Can I tie the bag of dynamite to the bow of the ship as as we're like descending? So tie it under the under the lip of the bow, so it'd be difficult to see for somebody on the ship. Uh, sure, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could okay. just do that with your action, no problem. Abel leans over the gunwales of the little lifeboat and reaches under the bow of the galleon, and quickly begins to tie a knot that would secure this bag of dynamite to the bow of the ship out of sight of the folks on the deck of the ship while he uh, waits for Ellis. Like to the figurehead and stuff? Yeah. Alex. So I see Thaddeus at the base of the stairs. You got what you need, Thaddeus? Yeah, yeah, I'm all set. All right, let's get the hell out of here then. Follow me. Because I've been watching him go up there to the... So I'm going to start making my way over to the ship. Uh, Start making my way over to this lifeboat. How big is this lifeboat? It can fit all of us pretty easily. Yeah, it could probably fit 10 people. Yeah, I'm just going to toss this, uh, my suitcase and Harper's famous duffel bag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> signature. Toss it in there. And what do I have to do to start lowering this boat? We're going to make it an athletics roll only because it's so close to the side of the canyon wall. Oh, you guys are screwed. A failure will still result in it being lowered. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for wording. Does it have to be athletics and not strength? In suede, yes. This is What's your rough. athletics? D4. What? What? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's strong boy. Why have you done this? I don't know. I don't play a lot of sports, I guess. <laughs> oh my too God. busy kicking you're, ass. You're doing kung fu, jumping off shit. And kung he... fu is not athletic, <laughs> dummy. It is definitely athletic. It's fighting and I just oh got two more. Oh my God. I have no doubt. Stay guys. <laughs> <laughs> but the crowd boys are getting into it again. Right. So that Abel, you're tying it, right? And the boat is sort of twisting in your direction as like Ellis looks at the rest of the ship and he starts to lower it, but the rope has been damaged. So as he starts to turn it, it just snaps and the whole thing topples. And you, Harper, and Lucky are thrown into the cold water below as the ship turns to its side and then flips and falls on top of you. At least we got that book. All right, I'm going to deal some cards. Thaddeus, eight of diamonds. You also had bad luck with cards. Ellis, seven of spades. Abel, five of spades. Harper, nine of hearts. Lucky gets a joker. Oh, great. Hey, you need oh, that. Oh, you know what I forgot, though? That uh, didn't happen on their side, but certainly can happen to you. When a joker is drawn, everybody draws a Benny. Oh, that's right. What? I would that's love a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely a thing. I think it's really? literally called yeah. Joker's yeah. Wild. Like the show. Can somebody give me hey. a Benny? And then Cola Kid's troops do a nine of diamonds. Cola Kid got a two of hearts. Mondrian's troops are going to get one last turn before they're done. They got a king of diamonds. Uh, Lucky, do you want to go first? No, I'll wait. Mondrian's troops fire at some of the troops that are on the deck of the ship, and they kill two. There's only two Cola Kid people still left standing. Harper, you're in the cold water. Harper is probably not having a great time trying to swim. One armed, he yeah, tread so. water. <laughs> yeah, he's. I mean, he's treading water, but like, yeah. I don't know, he's in like clothes and like wet and heavy, and like his fucking duffel bag went over. Everything he fucking owns is like gone at this point. Uh, he's just uh, fucking treading water. I guess he's gonna try to swim and put one arm on the boat so that he doesn't fucking drown. Yeah, he's just gonna look up at the boat and just wait for gunfire to start raining down on his head. 
six more members of the upright gang are starting to be lowered off the side of the cliff. They're not falling rapidly like their compatriots. They're slowly walking down as someone belays them down, but they all are holding rifles as they walk down the, the side. The men on the deck of the ship put down the rest of Mondrian's troops. What is that giant monster thing doing? That's like a hundred feet away from you and out of sight. You sort of bounced out and that's been out of your view for a while now, so you're not okay. sure. I imagine the screaming has stopped though. Thaddeus. Uh, Thaddeus will charge up the stairs to try to meet up with good old Ellis. Yep. He catches sight of him like <laughs> looking gets, over the Alice side. Alice is of just ship. looking over the gets side of the boat. Going, <laughs> <laughs> He'll call out to you. Hey, Ellis, where are they? Uh, time to go swimming, Thaddeus. I'm I'm sorry. Jump off the ship, Thaddeus. Are you serious? I'm serious. Shit, you said there are more people descending? More people descending, yeah, and the rest of the Mexican soldiers have been cut down. So there's two on the deck of the ship, six coming from up above. Hey, so I know it hasn't been helpful at all, but Harper, you no longer have benefits of armor. Sweet. <laughs> Good news. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to drop the uh, concentration on that, and I'm going to go ahead and, after having shuffled everything around in my pockets again, I'm going to pull out that deck of cards, and uh, I'm going to pull out a hand and cast Obscure. Given the the environment, the foggy area is just going to weirdly condense in like the 20 feet above our heads further up the, the cliff face. So that it sort of obscures the edge of the boat where we're going to be trying to get the fuck out of here and where everybody else is coming down from. Trying to give us a little fog cloud for okay. escaping. Yeah. And then what are you doing with your movement? Well, I guess the, the rest of my movement is trying to get over to Ellis unless I can get over the side without having a multi-action or anything. Uh, you can jump over the side, yeah. Did the boat drop as well? Yeah, the boat's down there. So, is it, so we're all in the water. Okay. All in the water. Boat's overturned. Okay, so then, yeah, I'm totally doing that then. Make an athletics roll to see if you can do it without hitting the cliff side, without tripping, without hitting the boat. Six on my athletics roll. You, like, get up to the top with one foot, and mid-leap you see the boat, and you see your brother splashing below, and you jump right in the middle of it, missing all of them. Ellis. Real quick, do I see this doctor anywhere? No. I'm jumping. Cool. Same roll. I don't want to roll any dice. You're pretty good at that. You're fine. You roll a three. Uh, a you want to add a D6? Yeah, I'll add a D6. One success. success. Perfect. You jump into the water. No problem. Success. You jump into <laughs> yeah. the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Abel, what's going on, man? Um, the stuff within the boat has been dumped into the water. Uh, that's one thing that's happened for sure. Can he make some sort of agility roll or something to grab it before it like flips? The boat? No, the, the suitcase and the double My bag. Shit. Uh, if you want to spend your turn sort of clutching at that stuff, that sounds good to me. Yeah. So how many things do I get to save? Uh, one for every success and raise you roll. Uh, I think it has to be athletics. Am I ever going to use agility for anything no, ever again? No, it's only reactionary. God damn. Well, this is reactionary. Yeah. Where we're saying, like, as it gets dumped, I grab the bag. All right, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Roll some jelly. We broke it. We figured it out, guys. <laughs> Lawyered. Well, you're right. It's like dodging out of the way. Or uh, That's only a five, unfortunately. Which thing do you grab? The uh, infamous Le Herper <laughs> Duffel bag. I know you're making fun of it, but we've talked about oh, it a wait. lot. Liar. I mean, a you lot. have. You have... You always call it his signature. Let me tell you the scenes that it's been involved in. Harper first shows up. Jackalope scene. Yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It's in his room underneath. It was called out in the campfire scene. and It was also called out in the hotel when he put it on top of the piano. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying what makes it so famous. (laughs) Caleb likes it. It's got fucking screen time, man. That'd be wearing the same shoes every day and be like, the infamous Cameron shoes. Because Harper showed up. And the first thing Cameron said about that duffel bag is he said, Harper's carrying his signature duffel bag. I don't think, I think you said that. No, you said it. I said signature duffel you bag? You said signature duffel bag. Yeah, yeah. really? It says yeah. Harper on the side. It was well, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. remember ever making that I'm, a point. I'm sorry, yeah. but I'm not going to save it. I'm going to save the <gasps> bag with the box in it. I mean, that's yeah. fine. I don't give a shit. So what are the other two bags? <laughs> My suitcase. Thaddeus's possessions. Thaddeus' stuff, Harper's <laughs> stuff, and Ellis's stuff. And you grab your bag. My Perfect. stuff. <laughs> what do we just lose? Lucky, you do have a joker. If you want to spend your turn doing that as well, you're free to. Or you can start dealing with the boat. 
situation. I would try for the bags with the minus three. But you get plus <laughs> well, two. Get it. So, so it would be nine nine one. You get the plus, yeah. What bags are we losing? We're losing <laughs> Thaddeus's, which is probably like some twigs or something like that. I won $400. <laughs> yeah. A couple of lucky rocks, probably. Uh, and then the signature's double bag. That's what yeah, we're Yeah, but losing. all that's... I mean, I'm losing my signature weapon, which I was... His trademark weapon. I, you, my trademark weapon, which at some point... He can get a new yeah. one. Yeah, I can get a new one. It's just going to take like a month or some shit and then mine has all your liquor so you're it's filled with bad. liquor <laughs> i've got more on my satchel yeah you're gonna smell bad but it also has my rifle in there Family my heirloom my famous signature what? rifle <laughs> all right so <laughs> well really it's the four hundred dollars <laughs> what could i possibly do flip the to, boat um, use it to flip the boat yeah what could i do to flip this boat it um, seems pretty unlikely well, it's the, gonna be the athletic. thing is normally when you're trying to flip a boat you don't have any leverage but you've got the side of the canyon wall and you've got the boat so i'm i, I don't know but i'm sure you could figure out something i just looked it up you can flip a boat like this in the open ocean with like two people and that's an open ocean with waves so here i don't think it's unreasonable for a person to do it this is like a boat that could hold 10 people this thing's huge, right? It's just a lifeboat, yeah. I mean, if you're going to say lucky strong enough to do this, then, uh, well, well, we'll find out. We'll we? find out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> lucky strong enough to do this. Are you kidding me? Athletics roll. No problem. I'm very good at that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to roll. do a Benny. Failure by one. He's spending his red Benny, his last Benny. I, I, no, I passed. I passed. You passed barely. I passed yeah. just barely with a four. Exactly. Uh, so how do you flip this boat? <laughs> Do you want to know how you're so actually supposed yeah, yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So totally. the way you do is you climb on top of it, but you stand on the very top and you lean down and you grab the lip of the boat and then you lean backwards. But we also have the wall there. So I mean, you can maybe like leverage yourself between the wall and the boat and try and flip it that way too. Yeah, uh, Lucky would definitely do that second one because uh, you would definitely not think Oh, that. I saw this on uh, Bear <laughs> <Yes>. Grylls. <laughs> yeah. Survivor Man on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, channel. so Harper's probably on the other side of the boat just hanging on and uh, that's probably giving him some leverage and some added weight to help flip this thing and uh he positions himself between the, the wall and the boat and just kind of uses all his strength and his legs and his arms to flip this bad boy over i think the shot we see is like you doing that and then we cut underneath and we can see the boat flipping in the water and harper's duffel bag along with thaddeus's bag and ellis's suitcase go past the camera into the depths Cut to the deck of the ship where the cola kid appears drinking another bottle or smashing it down on the deck of the ship as uh, his muscles start to ripple and swell. And he looks around to the remaining people on the ship. The rest of his troops land down up above. Um, what he saw was a group of people in the night get to one of the lifeboats and set off. Well, set off is a little bit generous. He saw a lifeboat fall into the <laughs> Yeah, he probably heard the lifeboat smash against the rock wall and then smash against the boat and then smash yeah. against the rock wall and then hit the water. And some yells of <laughs> yeah. terror. And, uh, From pain. his perspective, there's, there's still a ship to clear. Lots of the Mexican soldiers have been pushed down below. So as his troops come down, he tells them to ready their weapons. He draws his own sword as he grows to like this. He grows from like this kind of five foot two figure to almost eight feet tall. He just grows like his clothes that are already too small for him start to rip as he uh, grabs this blade, which almost looks like a knife in his hands. And he starts to laugh with his black teeth as him and his men descend into the, the carne de osa, no longer invisible. And I think with that, we're going to drop out of initiative. The boat's been righted and everyone's in the water. Son of a bitch. Get get the boat over yeah, here. Yeah. This is fucking where, cold. Where's my gear? Where, where are my packs at? It's gone. All the stuff is gone. What? Ellis said Abel had him. The boat in the went ocean. over. Had him just get in the boat. You saw that boys. happen. I didn't watch it fall. You saw it overturn. You saw Lucky turn it over. We got knocked in the fucking water, and I'm still in the, in the water. Where I'm getting Lucky's uh, kind of sticking an arm out to help people in. Without hesitation, Abel grabs, uh, whips the sack over into the boat with a clunk, and then uses Lucky to pull himself in with a big groan and a, like a tumble down to the bottom of the boat. There's like a few failed attempts as Harper tries to get himself into the boat, which he can't do one armed, and then like two people have to reach over and pull him in so is there any way that uh thaddeus could have been doing all of this with his spear in his other hand spend a benny and you had it on you excellent so then uh thaddeus will take his spear toss it over the lip of the the lifeboat 
and he'll sort of try to clamor into the, uh, the life draft after his brother. I'm going to spend a Benny to say that a lot of our food and stuff was in Abel's bag so that we don't have to starve. Or that it's a stocked lifeboat. And with that, yeah, you're all in the, the boat. It's got a couple of oars. So you push yourselves off this cliff off this cliff wall and I think start to row away. Hold up. Hold up. Can we still hear the sounds of combat from inside of them putting down the last of the soldiers and so on? Can any of you uh, see that bag up there? I think I kind of see it hanging right under the bow. I'm not shooting in. Are you kidding me? Don't make me do this. Don't look at me. I got a shotgun. Harp. Do you you think I can make that fucking shot? Wait a minute. Why don't you just do your fire? Oh, you looking at me? I thought you were I don't think anybody else can produce fire out of of nowhere. Oh, well... (sighs) Oh, well, nothing. Fucking do it, that is. Jesus Christ. Well, clearly you don't understand. It takes a little bit more effort. Get your cards out, then. Look. I, I, Jesus I can't. Christ, Harper. Harper stands up and starts just shooting wildly at the bag. Harper, God damn it! calm down. We talked about this. I'm imagining that it's beyond 30 feet, so I'm going to be taking minus two. Yeah, I think if you want to be outside of its blast range, yes. Benny for that. That's a hit. No raise. You fire once, you fire twice, and then the third shot we cut to the bag of dynamite as it explodes. The figurehead of the dragon cracks from the front of the ship and falls splashing into the water. And the weight of it, as well as the weight of the explosion, pushes back the whole ship. The front of the ship is blown down to the iron. The facade of the wooden side of the ship is blasted away to reveal the iron underneath. And then it also punches through into the ship. We cut inside where some Mexican soldiers are hiding in cover from the advancing upright gang and they're blown forward into the upright gang who sort of like also gets burned by the blast and there's this massive hole in the ship as it drops sort of into the water and the ship starts to flood i think you guys in this ship to be out of the blast range have started to push away and uh the explosion the heat of it hits you but no damage is done to you and you're sort of away from the ship now I imagine we have a channel to go down, right? Like we can yes. continue. Yeah. If we came down the front of the ship, we can basically keep going down that same yes. channel if yep. we so choose. Lucky uh, groans and clenches the side where his wound's at as he's looking at the inferno in front of him. Well, fellas, I think we lost our donkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God That's I'm the dead. end of the fucking yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. <laughs> That's good. That's a good line. That's a really good line. Oh my god, you guys are fucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Caleb? Well, we were fucked from the start. Okay. All you right. could have you could have fought it. I made it two rolls that whole yeah. time and it was uh, one was snake eyes. Thank you for listening to Sounds Like Crows. If you like the show, leave us a rating and a written review on iTunes. If you do that, you'll be entered in to win either a t-shirt or to play in a game with yours truly and some of the other Crow brothers as well. Check out our Patreon if you want to join in the conversation on Discord with a bunch of other listeners. And with that out of the way, let's talk about cast. Thanks to Marshall Sims for playing Thaddeus Crow. You can find him on Twitter at Mr. Malicious One. Thanks to my brother Isaac Sunstead for portraying Abel Crow. He's at Abel the Crow on Twitter. Then you've got Ellis underscore Crow at Ellis underscore Crow played by Alex Horrell. And then Lucky is played by Cameron Day who's not on social media but he is on our Discord If you want to back us on Patreon, you can come talk to him. Man, that's a bad plug, Caleb. And then we have Cameron Reed, Little Baby Daisy Crow, at CJ Reed 211. And I'm Caleb Sunstead, at Marshall Caleb. With all that out of the way, uh, the music was done by Levi Rojas and Rudy Zuniga. Deadlands Reloaded and Savage Worlds is owned by the Pinnacle Entertainment Group. I think that's it. Have a good day. Have a good night, where whatever time it is there, I hope it's wonderful, and as always, we'll see you next Monday. Dear Crow Brothers, my name is Amelia John Johnson, and I want to personally thank you for the continuation of my life.
Well, that's that's quite, uh, you well, see, see that is a person we did not murder. That's mm-hmm. pretty bold. It looks like this woman was on the train as you boys were headed towards Tombstone. Hmm. I saw everything that happened that night. Lucky standing up to the robbers, that madman with his guns and blades, even your brother's sacrifice. I can't imagine the pain of your loss, all this heartache just to keep us safe. Without your intervention, I and many more would have perished. I owe you my life. When I saw Lucky in the epitaph, I knew I had to write. I am writing not only to thank you, but because I am worried. Since that night, my sleep has been filled with wretched dreams. Hmm. I'm an old woman. I'm used to bad dreams, but these dreams are something else. Vivid, cold, invasive. I've only dreamt like this once before. The night after my husband was wrongly accused and hung. Those dreams have power. I think you need to hear them. Hold on. Yeah. Are we really going to read letters about people's dreams now? Yeah, this is not like a soothsaying service. I like it. Yeah, I want right. to hear about no. these dreams. We read all That's kinds it. of letters, Daryl. What's the problem with this one? Well, you don't like this one? It's fine, I guess. This is the first interesting one we've heard in a while. Yeah, it's really making me think about some things. The fuck is it making you think about, Thaddeus? I dream of the hooded man. He is tall as a tower, his skin pale death. He lifts me into the air, pulls the hood back to reveal scabbed purple lips. His breath is hot and rot like ice. He smiles, brings me closer so that my entire world is his horrid mouth. A bird pokes out from beneath his teeth, a black bird with red eyes. And then there's another and another, five birds all looking out. Suddenly, they let out a unified caw and burst from their prison. They fly above the massive head, tearing at flesh and cloth until the hooded man screams and drops me from his hands. I don't fall. I float and watch. She sent this via telegram, probably. This is a telegram. This is a lot of money. This is a lot of this money. This is an expensive ass telegram. But she doesn't fall. I float and watch. A single yellow eye blazes through a tear in the hood. The birds group together it's and tear. as. What? Daryl, that w- that word was tear, not a tear. They tear through. Fix yeah, your shit. On. Aren't they synonyms? I'm going to smack the fuck out of you. He's going to smack the fuck out of you. I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Daryl, you really need to pay attention to context in your reading. They dart through the eyes like bullets. They pierce the thing and break through the other side. No blood pours from the wound. No gore, just screaming. Shadows. Then there's darkness. Then there's light. It's high above me and warm. I can barely see it so bright. All I can make out are five silhouettes. They hover in the air between immeasurable light and all-consuming darkness. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They look tired. Mm -hmm. There's a second dream. Jesus Christ. In it, another black bird, but this time with emerald eyes. It's lying on the floor, gored and ruined. There's now, more blood on, than hold a... hold on, I don't want to lose the context of the first dream. We can revisit this second one in a bit. That's a good idea. Yeah, we actually, need, yeah. If we're going to dissect this properly. There's now, Thaddeus, why don't, you, uh, why don't you pull some cards and tell us what it means? Now, you don't need cards <laughs> to tell you what it means. I can tell you what it means right now. This is representative of us killing the judge. It is very simple. You can see it the entire time time right you I got your five you all. got your five black birds representing five crows come on yeah no i, I got track. that one got two that. three four five crows i'm on board with you right now daisy yeah yeah you know he was talking about the hooded man that's obviously the judge right and we killed his ass well, I think is that's that, a big assumption. Was that know. is that what that was? He said a hooded man. The judge was wearing a hood. All of them do. No, no it, I mean when when he was going on about tears and tears and whatnot. That that was that was us. Tearing through the judge's eye. Or crying. Or you right? yes. that, that this woman had dreams after we killed this judge just because we killed this judge? No, I think it's the opposite. I think that she was foreseeing us killing this judge. I don't think dreams have any sort of meaning. Now you're talking sense. The only thing that really matters is... She didn't dream about you, Daryl. That would have been a much worse. Now that's a no, nightmare that's, right that's there. damn true. Hmm. I could have read that shit at least. <laughs> No one could read that. No. The, what she's oh, asked, the though, devil. Let's get into the second dream. The all second right. dream is there's another bird, but this time it has emerald eyes. It's blood all over the ground. A hand reaches out and plucks out the bird's eye and rolls it between its fingers. Then I'm watching a rabbit with long yellowed antlers. Its eyes are different colors, one bright green, one pure black. There's boot prints in the dust. 
I think he's following them, and it's so dark around, and he's so frail, so skinny. I wonder what he, he is. Is this mixed abomination of shadows and light? Now, what she's asking, boys, is, boys, do you dream of that night? Do you see your lost brother? <laughs> well, what dark things follow you? You are all born from death, this is clear. But what else these dreams hold, I cannot say. Perhaps they will mean more to you. You are good men. Spread the goodness and help all you can. If you are ever in Tombstone and need shelter, ask for the widow John Johnson, and I'll have beds for you. It's the least I can do. Thank you for my life, and sleep well. Amelia J.J. I think she's been drinking too much milk before there going to sleep. Again. Yeah, milk dreams will you drink get too you. too much milk before you go to sleep. You have crazy dreams like that. Well, what's milk dreams? That's, oh. where, that's when you drink a lot of milk, mm-hmm. you go right to bed, mm-hmm. and you have dreams like that. Oh, yep. my God. Now, Are you boys still on about this? Milk dreams are a damn thing, Daddy. So I I'll think tell cheese you what. works, too, right? No, yeah. Jesus listen, is even worse. Abel and I told yeah, Ellis that back when he was seven, and yep. he's been running that into the ground for the it's last true. 20 years. It's Ma damn just true. just wanted a way to I get him to drink milk. It. Other people have been saying it, too. Yep. That's because it's the rumor we started. Nah, we're pretty influential. So. People you have never talked to before, they've been telling me about these crazy milk dreams, and it sounds just like that. Hey, you know what's funny about people you never talked to talking to you? It's almost like they can write you letters, much like this one we got here. Uh, and it seems like uh, maybe Abel and I started that rumor all those years ago. All right, let's take a bet here, Thaddeus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spread. Mm, okay. You ready for this? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. right back to this. Okay. This, uh, this, this dream. lady. That's right. This old lady. Johnson. Okay. John Johnson. Johnson. John Johnson. Miss Amelia John Johnson, that's right. Mm -hmm. Let's write back to her. Let's ask if she drinks a lot of milk before going to bed. And if she says, why, yes. Yes, I do. Ellis, what are you talking about? Where are we going to get this letter? Daryl. This is a giant bag of letters that I got way back when. We'll just telegram it. She's probably dead, but... She's definitely dead. Well, that's a a risk I'm willing to take on this one. All right, let me... $10, $10, Thaddeus, if she writes back and she says, yes, I have, you owe me $10. <laughs> Listen, you're I, gonna I pay believe me in milk $10 dreams. when she says she hasn't been drinking milk yes. in the last 30 years. That's right. That's I, I believe in milk dreams, but that ain't what this is. This is a damn fortune teller. Fortune teller? This lady can see the future in her dreams. Come on. She saw no. us kill the Wait judge. Wait a minute. Whatever this next thing is, it ain't good, I'll tell you that. What was that line about the cloak figure again? They was following uh, following the jackalope Say and the it crow one more time. What was that? Daryl, what was that? Hey, there's a lot of passages about a hooded figure. Ellis, you're going to have to be a little bit more uh, specific. What are you getting at in anyway, second, though? It's just out In the it. second Pop. dream, talking about a hooded figure following. It wasn't a hooded figure. It was a pair of boots. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. There's boot prints in the in the. A dust. little bit further. He's so frail. There it is. So skinny. I wonder what he is. This mixed abomination of shadows and light. Shit, she's talking about you, Daryl. That's yep. you she's talking about. That's now she, that I'll believe. An abomination. Yep. Maybe she is and a, a fortune a, teller. A skinny little beanpole abomination. Who is crazy. Abomination of a man. Dark and light. We all know you got a darkness in you, Daryl. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it out there, Daryl. It's what running scared. What my mama scared. said before she took her life. Jesus you mean before Christ you Darryl. took her life, Daryl? Jesus Christ. We all know you did it. You told us one night. That's a rumor spread you, by folks of militias just and let dead. It out, you Darryl, told us killed. that, Daryl. Listen, you told us that. Daryl, we've all killed people. People we regret killing, all right? Well, That's lucky true. he's only take murdered from us. one, to be clear. I've, I've killed people I regret a lot. He's killed a lot of people, Daryl. But it feels a lot better to just let it out, Daryl. It's true. You got Darryl? all repressed feelings and these <sighs> repressed memories. I killed my mama. God you damn it, Daryl, get bitch. the fuck out of here. Sick freak, Daryl. <laughs> Jesus, I Darryl. swear to God, I'll fucking put you in the ground, you <laughs> crazy son of a bitch. I can't believe you came into this knowing the past we brothers had, and you're just going to keep that? You just killed your fucking ma, and you're hanging around with us. I guess just write her back saying, yeah, we got dreams. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask her about the milk, too. 